This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Wednesday, September 29th, wherever and however you're connected, Always great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with Kalani Satake, T-shirt designer and collaborator, Jerem Jordan. It's good to see that uh, Jamal Williams got that swag. Uh, He said the following in uh, Jamal That, a new segment from the Detroit Lions, which is fun. Can I give a shout-out real quick? Shout-out to my boys, (laughs) BYU. They doing their thing. This is my boy, Coach Satake. That boy ready to go. (laughs) He still look like that right now, just to let you know. Keep rocking. Repping the Y, that's my boy right there. <laughs> Jamal being Jamal, man, he's great. He's great. Also, shout out to your Orioles for winning last night to make it so the Mariners are only a half game out of the wild card right now with like four or five games to go. Don't tell me the worst team in baseball doesn't care about the final games, Jerem. They care, and they're hooking your Mariners up. Let's go, Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. Cal Ripken would be proud. So I have concert tickets Wednesday, uh, Tuesday night to Angels and Airwaves. If Ooh, the Mariners, concert. Yeah, I'm excited. New uh, album out. If the Mariners make the wild card, they would play probably <laughs> against the Yankees on the road. I'm like, shoot, do I need to go? Because if they don't win that, that's the, the playoff appearance. That may Hopefully they make it in the next couple of years. But do I have to go to that? Jerem, Yes. Wait, wait, do you have to go to the concert or do you have to go to the game? The game, but... Yes, see, you need to get on a plane and just, go to New York. That's, that's just... That's just... Jerem, you know. how, the last but time the Mariners win, made the playoffs... A one. But... 20 years ago. I'm well aware. Please don't remind me. It's bad. Um, but if they win, then they're playing a five-game series, right? And then I'll go to one of those. But what if they don't? But what, what if they don't? Be, what would be more epic than going to Yankee Stadium for a one-game playoff... 20 years later to watch your Mariners. <laughs> Even if they lose, it would be an epic it, it experience. Would epic. It would be Get epic. on a plane and go. Yeah. Shell out the cash. I might. I might do, do it. Do it. Oh, well, hopefully the Mariners make the playoffs. If they do, then I can figure that out. I've I never, won't know until Sunday. I've never been to a playoff baseball game. I've been to one. Dodgers uh, hosting the Diamondbacks. And did it disappoint you? No. Hanging okay. out in right field. There with you the go. Limited nachos and hot dogs was amazing. Let's get this man to New York for the Mariners, assuming <sighs> they can I hope climb they make the it. final step and get into the yeah, playoffs. Yeah, I, I, I uh, hope we make it, man. It's exciting. Hey, energy's good. Jamal Williams is doing his thing. He's uh, bringing it with the Kalani Satake shirt. Jeremy's feeling good as Mariners are knocking on the playoff door in September, which are words I never thought I I'd utter on this show. Honestly, I didn't even know they played baseball this late until this year. Yeah. Hey. That's a joke. We're doing our show every day regardless, and your Wednesday show lineup includes... A marquee showdown for BYU football in Las Vegas. Yeah, the big ticket matchup with Notre Dame essentially completes the 2022 schedule. But how do you feel about that game not happening in Provo? Former BYU quarterback, current radio analyst Riley Nelson previews Friday's rivalry game with Utah State. He played on both sides of it. What's the key to handling road hostility in Logan? And BYU senior transfer guard T. John Lucas joins us to explain What makes this BYU basketball team special? Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. As BYU prepares for Utah State Friday night, the status of Jaron Hall remains undecided, according to head coach Kalani Stuck. Yeah, he's coming along. I mean, it's one of those things where you have to still look at, um, is is he going to be at a point where we can, um, where we're, first of all, we're we're comfortable with him protecting himself, and then also the, efficiency of our offense and, and what we have with Baylor and, and with Conover and others. So uh, we're, we're still figuring that out. Hey, they'll figure it out soon enough, but it is a short week, so they got to figure it out soon. BYU sends live from Logan on Friday. That'll be fun. Cougar pregame live at 6 Eastern on BYU Radio. Uh, excuse me, 7 Eastern. Ken to kick off at 8 Eastern. BYU announces a neutral site game versus Notre Dame in Las Vegas, as Finally. we just mentioned, October 8th. 2022 at the home of the Las Vegas Raiders Allegiant Stadium. Now, since Kalani Satake took over as head coach at BYU in 2016, the Cougars have played seven different games in NFL venues. This will make eight. 
Cougs four and three in those games. It'll be the ninth meeting between BYU and Notre Dame with the Fighting Irish holding a 6-2 series lead. It also marks the first neutral site meeting between the two schools. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second, uh, what's trending. BYU offensive lineman James Empey is a semifinalist for the William V. Campbell Trophy, given to the nation's top football scholar athlete by the National Football Foundation. Empey is a team captain with a 384 GPA in finance. He loves the 84 national championship team so much that his GPA is .84. That's repping. BYU basketball holding an open practice last night live on BYU TV to give all Cougar fans a look at this renewed and revamped team. And the Cougars did not disappoint, including this. Oh! 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 Wow. Play of the night right there for, from Fusene Traore from Mali. Wow. Foos throwing it down. How about the length on that guy? If you missed the practice, you can watch it all on the BYU TV app on demand right now. Yeah, it was fun, man. It was great. Uh, fresh cross-country rankings are out. The women are tied for first. That's fun. And the men are fifth. So both in the top five, baby. BYU women's golf will finish the final round of the Golf Week Red Sky Classic. The Cougars currently sit in third place. They won their first two tournaments this season, so they're in position to potentially win their first three, which is wild. Kirsten Fotu in second at six under par alone. She's one shot off the individual lead. And Michael Rucker gave up no runs in an inning pitch for the Cubs against the Pirates in an 8-6 loss. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. BYU Notre Dame destination Las Vegas on October 8th, 2022. You may have noticed... This is not a home game that Notre Dame owed BYU per the contract that was set all the way back in 2010, but the game's happening. My question is for all of you, and for you, Jerem, specifically now, does the location of the BYU-Notre Dame game matter, or are you just happy the game got scheduled at all? No, I'm just happy it got scheduled. Um, th this, as pointed out by our homie Mitch Harper from KSL, this was the first series that BYU announced of Independence, and the, now the last uh, because it fills the 22 schedule, which we will look at in a second. Yes, there was a contract. They owed BYU a home game. This could have been bought out a long time ago. It really could have, but it wasn't. They're playing a game. I know it was supposed to be in Provo. This will be a bigger deal being in Las Vegas. Remember when BYU played Arizona, how big a deal that was? It had nothing to do with Arizona and everything to do with being in Vegas, being on ESPN, kicking off the season. This is going to be in October. Uh, you know, We're like 10 days out from it being a year away, it's next season, and it's happening. We're finally going to have that Notre Dame game. We don't have to talk about it in the offseason. What's the latest? Blah, blah, blah. This will be fun. Big challenge. It'll be a great showing from BYU fans. It's going to be 50-50 or maybe even 60-40 Notre Dame. Trust me, uh, <laughs> they're a bigger version of BYU in terms of the national fan base. But it will be awesome. Rudy was there in Vegas for the game. I did ask him um, before the game, hey, next year for BYU and Notre Dame, who, who are you going to run the flag out for? So he was a little undecided. I'm guessing Notre Dame, but it's all good. I'm, I'm very excited that we're going to get this game. And in that location, I really think that should be the second home of BYU football. It already is. It, like, that, that game was so fun. Like, the, I, I'm not just talking about on the field. I'm talking everything around it and in it. That stadium's incredible. It's, it's a modern uh, masterpiece, you know, seven wonders of the world. There's some unique stadiums that are just incredible. That one is incredible. And for the Raiders to have had such a dumpy situation historically, to now have that, it's pretty Oh, awesome. yeah. But I, I, I'm stoked, man. This will be great. Notre Dame, Shamrock Series, NBC. It's a home game for Notre Dame. So listen, six home games and then a pseudo home game, right, there, and you're at Boise State. So you're only playing eight games that – are outside of like five hours away, six hours away. Sorry, yeah. you're playing eight games within five hours. No, I I like that the game got scheduled. You had you wondered because it's been so long. Like, are they actually going to do this thing? And sure enough, Tom Homo, Jack Swarbrick, they figure it out. Got uh, you know a bunch of members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints and members of the Catholic Church congregating in Las Vegas of all places at Raider Stadium. Someone make a t-shirt like uh, to you continue know, the Shamrock Miami series. Yeah. The, I, I like that there uh, is some irony involved there, but yes, I, I applaud both sides for figuring it out. 
Notre Dame is a high maintenance partner when it comes to stuff like this, and so you cater to them. Well, it doesn't hey, matter. We're, we're it doesn't matter. The yes, high maintenance it doesn't matter where the game is. If Notre Dame says, "Hey, we want to play you," play the yep. game. Yeah. You play the game, and they could have bought it out a long time ago, or we could have said, "Eh, just give us the money." No, she, Tom waited. Now, as you just pointed out, this game is on NBC. Yeah. By being on NBC, Notre Dame national television, automatically this game becomes a bigger deal. It just does because it's in the Notre Dame contract. You're going to be probably playing. What if it's on Peacock? It's not. Gonna, <laughs> I'm just it is not going to be on Peacock. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, my goodness. Was it, yes. was it Toledo on Peacock? It's on NBC at Allegiant Stadium. That's fantastic. Uh, and I know that Notre Dame is going to be allotted more tickets because they're the home team. Yeah. It's all good. But BYU fans will figure out a way to yeah. finagle their way into that stadium. Oh, it's going to yeah. be very close to 50-50 when all is said and done. Listen, at Tennessee, there were probably, what, 10,000 BYU fans or something? That was an amazing showing. Yeah. In Vegas? No, it'll, it'll be awesome. If it's 60-40 Notre Dame, that's an amazing Great. showing for BYU. Yes. Also, <clears throat> what is also fantastic about this game, BYU, because they are the road team in Vegas and they agreed to this, they're going to receive a financial benefit for this, Jerem. And that's... Often, what goes undiscussed. I don't know. It doesn't that, need money. I don't know what that number is, but BYU is going to receive a nice chunk of change for agreeing to be the road team in their home away from home. And, so, and, and, and yeah, t- we're going to pay you this. I don't know, seven figure sum. Come to Las Vegas, where you have a ton of fans, and play this game. So it's on NBC. They get the game with Notre Dame in Vegas, and they get money for it. I, this is great. Uh, yeah, and and this will be the last of those games, by the way. Because once BYU is a Power 5 member, you're not getting money from anybody. You are the one who's shelling it out. Distributing the money? Yeah. All right, our question of the day relates to this. We want to know what you think. Do you care about the location of the BYU-Notre Dame game? Does it matter? Or are you just glad the game got scheduled? Let's go to Voice of the Nation early. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Steve Preston on Twitter answers... This is extremely disappointing. Okay. The history and power five type status that Notre Dame has makes them think they can do this. BYU played two times there. They play one at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. That was the deal. Not two in South Bend and one in Las Vegas. Well, I I understand the disappointment, but Steve, what if this game doesn't happen at all and BYU just gets a million bucks? Are you happier? I'm way happier that BYU's playing in Vegas than not playing at all. And they're probably going to get more than a million bucks and play the game. BYU's not in a position to tell Notre Dame what to do. (laughs) Okay? Like, yes, you have a contract. Every contract, including marriage, can be undone. Okay? Yes, everything can be undone. So, I get the disappointment. But, Steve, BYU and and Notre Dame in Vegas. It's going to be awesome, man. I I know it would be fun in Provo. Sure. Guess what? All good, baby. It's actually a better situation in Vegas. In terms of... Not, not, hey, we get to host them, but, like, it's going to be a bigger deal nationally. And what if BYU goes 10-3 and three this year and returns everybody, right? That's going to be, BYU is going to be hopefully a ranked team going into that game. We'll see. Well, that's a separate conversation. In October. Who right. comes back to play for BYU football in 2022 with that COVID exception you're still available to so many? Well, there's like, yeah, it's true. Just like James MP bounce, there's going to Romney bounce if it goes really it's well. Tyler Algier that, bounce. That'd be a good problem. Yep. Austin McKell on Instagram says, any team, any time, <laughs> any place. Yeah. It doesn't matter. BYU was show up ready to play. Well, I don't want to take games on Wednesday anymore on the East Coast. Okay, didn't we learn from that, that we don't want to do that? Okay, topic two. Notre Dame games, the 12th game on the schedule next year. Here's what it looks like. September 3rd at South Florida. September 10th, Baylor at home. What's up, Jeff Grimes, Eric Mateo? September 17th at Autzen at Oregon. It's going to be awesome. September 24th, Wyoming! September 30th, Utah State. October 8th, we mentioned Notre Dame in Vegas. October 15th, Arkansas in town. SEC Arkansas is top 15 right now. October 22nd, at Liberty. Open date on the 29th. At Boise State, open. Dixie State on November 19th. Live on BYU TV. Maybe our last game in a while. November 26th, at Stanford. East Carolina to be determined on either the 29th of October or November 12th. What do you think of this schedule, man? I think that this schedule, based on what Power five teams are doing this year and power five teams that are on 2022 schedule is downright daunting. Jerem Baylor, top 25 team, yep. number 21 right now, Oregon, number three, mm-hmm. Notre Dame, number nine, Arkansas, number eight at, at Stanford, a Tan, uh, brother, Tanner McKee. What's up? That's three top 10 teams right now, but here's the good part. Yeah. 
We don't know what those teams will be next year. Well, they're looking at BYU going, hey, BYU starts. You team. never know. Yeah, Whoa. exactly. Hey, hey, same hey. thing. You never know what these teams are going to be. Is Arkansas flash in the pan this year? Probably. Does Notre Dame drop off? Is Oregon no. still a top five team? Mm. Is Baylor a top 25 team? Probably. Okay, and they're coming to Provo. Yeah. I, I think the schedule is really fun. Again, I, I like the, <laughs> Yeah, what do you mean by fun? I like the balance <laughs> of it. I like that BYU opens the season. Oh, and hey, in an NFL stadium, by the way. So they have two games in NFL stadiums next year. They're at USF, who plays at the home of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And they'll play in Allegiant Stadium. Yeah. So there are games eight and nine for Kalani Satake as a head coach in NFL Stadium. So I liked that opening game. You come back to Baylor. Huge road contest in Autzen. Yeah. Wyoming, Utah State. I like those rivalry games. Uh, renewing some Mountain West one, ties one, back to one back. One of those is the rivalry game. Okay. <laughs> Notre Dame in Vegas, and he come back for Arkansas. That that stretch is pretty wild. Okay, Notre Dame, Arkansas. And then you got to go on the road all the way to Virginia and play at Liberty, which is kind of a weird, sneaky game, especially if they bring back their quarterback. He's a good yeah. player. Yeah, they're they're better than they were when they came to Pro Bowl a couple of years ago. Um, who knows where East Carolina gets to do? But I, Jeremiah, I like it. Well, I got to avenge. I got to avenge that 2017. Level. There are That's there just, are only yes. five Power Five teams compared to seven this year. Well, I was hoping it was 12. But you don't care anymore because BYU is going to play at least eight Power Five teams every year as a member of the Big 12 starting well, in 2023. It's going to be nine or ten because you are going to play Utah. Uh, right, right. I said at least. Yes, there's. We know it's going to be at least nine, uh, maybe ten. Um, so. I'm I'm wondering, yeah, no Utah, of course, next two years, if you forgot. Um, no, I I like it. I think there's some good balance there. But, yeah, it's pretty challenging. But BYU should have a bunch of good dudes back. So let's go, man. Uh, the final independent schedule. Pretty good one. I hope the October 29th date remains open because BYU is going to need the break after that. Yes, and it's my birthday weekend. so There it um, is. That's, 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 that's right. That open? I probably have soccer or volleyball with you. <laughs> Okay, coming up, what was the best thing from BYU Hoops last night? And Riley Nelson, a guy who understands the BYU-Utah State rivalry better than most because he played for both teams, joins us to look at the Friday showdown at Maverick Stadium. Where does BYU have those clear advantages? Let's find out. It's BYU Sports Nation. Whoa, whoa. Jacket, we have a dress code here. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Samri. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, gift cards, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. I love riding bikes. I heard about Jill and Wade Hauser and Jill's mom, Rosemary. They build custom passenger bikes and they give them away. It's called the Blessing Bike. I want in. I want to meet Jill, Wade, and Rosemary. I want to take that Blessing Bike for a spin. I want to build some bikes. I want to meet some recipients and give some bikes away. I don't want to crash. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Watch BYU football with Kalani Sitake on demand with Gregor Bell, the aforementioned Kalani Sitake. Ryan Rico is the player guest, Deep Blue featuring Jake Oldroyd and the film room with Faith Romney. It's on demand on what's called the free BYU TV app. We are live at Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton. That is Jerem Jordan. Joining us now over Zoom is former BYU quarterback and standout Riley Nelson, he's the current BYU football radio analyst alongside the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, and he's ready to talk 
BYU at Utah State. But not before we address the fact that Notre Dame is back on the schedule. BYU is going to take on the Fighting Irish in Las Vegas at Allegiant Stadium on October 8th of 2022. Riley, it essentially finalizes the 2022 schedule. So how do you feel about the entirety of that rundown now that Notre Dame is in the mix in October? I love it. I feel I feel how I feel about this schedule coming into the season. Now what what you kind of need, what we're experiencing here in the 2021 season is the teams on the schedule have to do their part, right? And BYU's doing their part in that they're beating them. They're 4-0, and but uh, those teams have underperformed, so it's hurting the strength of schedule. Uh, I feel as optimistic going into the 2022 schedule as I do about the 2021 uh, as far as the strength of schedule and if BYU does their part, that that schedule should hold up to put BYU in a position for some, you know, for some notoriety and some postseason or bowl season success. And to have Notre Dame on there, I think, is the perfect capstone on what was a very strong schedule. What was the best and worst part of playing at Notre Dame in 2012? Oh, man. Worst part, obviously, was that we had our chances to win and didn't. Uh, we were got down into the red zone in the fourth quarter, down three. Uh, we had a missed opportunity at a touchdown, we, and then we missed a field goal to tie it. And even just the nature of how they even got up on us anyway. Our defense was playing great. Offense was playing good, not great. Obviously, we, didn't, we lost 17 to 14, so we didn't put a ton of points, but we were controlling the ball. We were putting together long drives. Uh, keeping their offense off the field and how they, anyway, Jeremy, you're getting me, (laughs) I'm going to give you a whole recap here. So I better stop myself. The best (laughs) part was, (laughs) the best part was obviously, you know, growing up as a football fan, watching Rudy as a rite of passage and to actually realize, oh, it's not just a movie set. It's a real place with real people and a real team uh, to be able to be at one of the, because not every college player gets that experience to say that they went into South Bend and, and we're able to compete against Notre Dame. And uh, so to be able to have that as an experience for the rest of the life is probably the best part. All right, let's talk rivalry football. Friday night at Maverick Stadium under the lights in Logan, Riley. Have you BYU. been there before, Riley? <laughs> have you been to that stadium? <laughs> uh, once or twice. <laughs> yeah. You, look, you understand the rivalry dynamic between the Cougars and Aggies probably better than most people in the world. What is it that makes this rivalry unique, let's say, compared to BYU's rivalry with Utah? Well, I think what makes it unique is where, and and this adds, it it adds a different element of it, where Utah and BYU has always been seen as as maybe twin brothers or or like peers, right? There are two competitors who who have always been viewed as the same level. Now, Utah has tried to separate themselves and say now that they're in the P5 conference, they're not. But obviously, you know, there was a few years there where that was the case. They had that P5 distinction. BYU doesn't, no longer. So it's back on a level playing field. Utah State has always, since they were left out of the whack, right, they made a big lobby. We're talking about conference realignment. It's nothing new. Back in I, back in the 70s when the WAC was created, Utah State was left on the outside looking in, and it changed the dynamic there. The other thing uh, that is interesting is there's brutal history for, for Utah State that's been somewhat remedied in the last 10 years. So whereas Utah BYU is one that has been, you know, just humming along for the for the last 30 years as being fairly competitive and fairly back and forth, Utah State BYU was extremely lopsided for the better part, of, you know, of a century, um, but is now being six and four in the last 10 games has been rekindled. Utah State has positioned themselves as a top G5 program that's able to recruit top talent they put for being a g5 they put a lot of guys in the nfl obviously they had a little bit of a lull bringing back gary anderson but now that they've got coach anderson you know and pre and prior to that matt wells they're able to um hire and put these up and coming coaches in a great position and uh, anytime that byu travels up to logan anything can happen it provide it's a really intimate atmosphere you know the fan one of the things for the fans to look out for is always uh usu has had their student section behind their sideline on that east sideline they've swapped it now to where they've put usu uh, alongside the season ticket holders and now the visitors will have uh, the fans behind them And, and from the sideline to the front row is only 14 feet 
So BYU will be packed in there and the whole, you know, havoc of the student section in Maverick Stadium will be raining down upon them. I'm excited to see how BYU is going to deal with that for the first time since 2019. Because even though, you know, they played a neutral site, that was really a, a home game. So this will be the first time they're really in a hostile environment, which is a challenge you relish as a player. Yeah, it's so shallow on, on in different parts there that for countdown to kickoff, I'm not even sure we're going to be on the sideline. Like, it's very narrow and, uh, frankly, some good gamesmanship to to have the herd right there. The Scotsman's going to be flying. It's going to be crazy. Okay, we know what BYU is, but tell us a little bit more about Utah State because they get a really nice, dramatic late win at Washington State. That makes you think, hey, that's that's a game BYU can go and win. They go 3-0. and uh, you know, comeback wins against, uh, you know, North Dakota and Air Force, and then really got, got it taken to by Boise State, but out-yarded Boise State, just couldn't complete uh, red zone finishes. So what do you think of the Aggies this season? So offensively, and uh, actually off-air, I'll, I'll share a little bit um, that in our post-game interview with Coach Satake, I was kind of talking some X's and O's with him, and I, one of the things that the fans to look out for is the wide receiver split. So they run a really innovative, Utah State runs a really innovative offense. Blake Anderson comes from Arkansas State, where he had a ton of offensive success. Um, and so I was actually, and one of the biggest unique things that they do is their wide receivers are split way out wide. What this allows them to do is have a very clean block, clean box for running plays. It, it, you don't have these players that can split the difference between covering a receiver and helping on the run. Most of the time, their closest receivers are outside the numbers, where most of the time you'll maybe see a receiver get to the top of the numbers. Utah State has one receiver on the numbers and one receiver even outside. And that allows them to do a couple of things, allows them to do some interesting thing in attacking the middle of the field and attacking vertically on the edge. But everything starts with the run with them. Uh, they've used tempo, how they got back into that Air Force and eventually came back and won that Air Force game was using tempo uh, in, the run, in the run game and to move the ball. So they are explosive offensively. I'll be interested to see how uh, BYU handles that, especially coming off of a performance that, while it was good enough, Post game, nobody really was happy with against South Florida. So that'll pose a unique challenge defensively. Uh, you know, it seems like they cycle these guys through. It was Woodward. Uh, it was Nick Vigil prior, even back when I was playing, it was Bobby Wagner. They've got another tremendous middle linebacker and a kid named Justin Rice, who's a transfer from Fresno, who leads the Mountain West in tackles. He's one of the top tacklers and playmakers uh, in the country. He's got forced fumbles. He's got an interception. He's really the heart and soul of that defense. Um, they are going to be under Utah State will be undersized compared to BYU's, uh, you know, front five up front. So we'll see how they how they meet that challenge. But I think BYU or I think Utah State's blueprint for BYU will be uh, to do what they weren't able to do against Boise, and that's finish drives and do their best to keep the ball away through racking up yards through the ground and the air with a unique set of formations and plays. Former BYU quarterback, current radio analyst Riley Nelson with us on BYU Sports Nation. The biggest question mark for BYU going into Logan is obviously who's going to start at quarterback. Is it going to be Jaron Hall? Will he be healthy enough? Or does Baylor Romney, after a very solid performance against USF, 300 plus yards, 20 of 25 passing, three touchdowns, no turnovers, does he get the nod in Logan? But let's take that question one step further, Riley. Does it even matter for BYU right now who starts at quarterback in Logan in terms of their ability to win this game? Spencer, I, I'm glad that you brought that second point of the because I was going to say, yeah, it's the biggest question, but I think it's the most immaterial because whoever's whoever they trot out there, whether it's Baylor or it's Jaron, uh, the offense is going to be able to produce enough to get the win. I think the bigger question for BYU is a lot of the guys that they were missing against South Florida or that went out with, you know, bumps and bruises against South Florida. We know Kalani said that nobody, you know, should be missing extended time, but will that defense that struggled in the second half of that South Florida game, be able to recover both from a health standpoint and then also from an execution standpoint to meet the challenge of being on the road against a, a really a high octane offense in Utah state. So uh, for the, as far as the quarterbacks go, I, I've got faith in both of them. And I think that the offense maybe looks a little bit different. I normally don't love the gamesmanship of, of 
being coy about who will play because I don't think it makes a difference. But I do think Baylor is much more of his strength is much more of being a distributor, right? Getting the ball in the, getting the ball in the hands of the many talented playmakers that USU has. Jaren's is more of the offense runs through him, whether it's making decisions in, in RPO situations or having a strong, you know, QB centric run game mixed in with, you know, a solid passing game. So I do think that that would bow. I do think uh, keeping it under wraps probably gives them a slight advantage in that if I'm Utah State, I'm preparing differently for the two quarterbacks depending on on them. So I think we won't find out until shortly before game time, if not in the first series. You know, he just blows the cover and plays Jacob Conover just totally <laughs> off the radar. No, just kidding. We, we've seen a half. Wild card. From, yeah, that'd be wild, right? We've seen a half from both Jaron Hall and Baylor Romney at Utah State in 2019. That's the crazy thing with this matchup is it's, it wasn't Zach Wilson. You know, he was hurt at that point. So either guy, it's going to be good. But um, what what is Utah State, uh, outside of the unique offense you mentioned, what did they do that has you concerned? <sighs> They are scrappy. And now you say this and they just eventually ran out of gas and Boise was good enough, but watching the, the Washington state team, this is a team that uh, the last two years essentially lost all steam and all momentum, right? They had the great 2018 and then Matt Wells leaves to Texas tech. They hire back Gary Anderson who brought them out of obscurity, right? Gary Anderson is a, a demigod over there. He walks on water, but then came back and he wasn't able to put together the same staff he was a decade older, maybe didn't have the same energy. The dynamics around the program were not the same. And they just floundered in 2019 and last year, leading now to Blake Anderson. So you would think that like, you know what, these are going to be the old same go get them Aggies. They're going to go out and try their best, but you know, they'll probably, they'll likely fall short. And, uh, and this, the, the rebuild is going to take a couple of years because of how bad 19 and 20 were. Well, they come right out the gate and they get a P5 road win, uh, you know, against they get a P5 road win, which they haven't done in decades. And then they follow that up with their down big at Air Force, claw their way back, win that one in a shootout. So the biggest thing that worries me is in the third quarter, this BYU team has had a lull. Uh, in every in each of the four games, they've been able to overcome it. Right? It's it's come, it's come down. Every game has come somewhere in the late third to early fourth quarter. The opponent has made it a single score game, requiring that the BYU offense come back and answer. And they've been able to do that in each of those four, being that it's on the road, being that it's a hostile environment, and being that Utah State has already been in situations where they have not only clawed their way back, but finished the job with comeback wins on the road. That is what worries me most is that this team believes that if they're, even if they're down and they get in a dogfight, if it's close in the second half, they're going to believe that they can finish the job. Uh, now, BYU has proven that they can finish the job as well. But again, being in their house, it's going to be a little bit, it's going to be a challenge that BYU hasn't faced yet. So if anything worries me, it's that dynamic that this USU team really does believe that not only can they fight their way back into any game, but finish it winning it. Riley Nelson on BYU Sports Nation. We always appreciate the insight and uh, your expertise in the matters, Riley. We'll be sure to let you know what the Utah State fans say on the sideline to the BYU guys when we're down on the sideline, all right? Oh, I'm sure it'll be nice, friendly, just pleasantries. <laughs> we look forward to it. If it's to not, it. let me know. I know some people up there I can talk. We can, we can whip them in shape. Great stuff. All right, Riley, we'll see you in Logan. Thanks. You bet. See you guys. Riley Nelson on BYU Sports Nation. His point about first half, second half. So BYU right now is plus 56 in the first half, minus 21 in the yeah, second half. Yeah, no, that's, it, it's, that's a it's, fantastic yes. insight. BYU's uh, plus 32 in the second quarter specifically. So that's been awesome. But yeah, in, in the third quarter, minus 13. In the fourth quarter, minus 8. Now, what's crazy about that is while they've had the lull, BYU has still not trailed at any point this season. Building leads that you can sustain through the end. Will BYU trail at any point in Logan? We'll see who gets the opening kickoff. Coming up, we talk hoops with T. John Lucas. And which 2022 BYU football game are you most excited about? Is it Notre Dame in Vegas? This is BYU Sports Nation. Dixie State for obvious reasons.
Quick Quack. Wash all you want. Don't drive dirty. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves. And we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> with the free BYU TV app. I like it. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. On this week's Deep Blue Podcast, to talk with running superstars Anna Kent Bennett, Whitney Orton Morgan about growing up in a small Utah towns, winning national championships, and setting a world record together. Listen to it on the BYU Radio app and we're podcast up there. He is Jeremiah Spencer. This is BYU Sports Nation. You can get awesome content throughout the day. Follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. The Cougar Whip Around presented by Visible Supply Chain Management tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. Uh, Jamal Williams, uh, just incredible ambassador right now for BYU. Is there anybody better than him for BYU as an ambassador? No, at least publicly and because of the way social media is right now, Jamal Williams is the king of it. Steve Young is an amazing ambassador, but Jamal Williams knows how to utilize social media and rep the why. I, I think it's great. Jamal, yeah, when you th- what, nationally, when you think BYU, you don't think of someone like Jamal. But there's a place for everybody here, including Jamal Williams. He's, he's fantastic, man. He's so fun. He's so real. I love it. He could have gone on and forgotten about BYU and done his NFL thing. No, BYU is very much a part of who he is and his entire family for that matter. Yes, amen. I love it. All right, what did you see from BYU basketball last night that has you most excited for the upcoming season? Good juice, great athleticism. Atiki Ali Atiki, Fuseni Traore, those guys are super long, and they're not going to be relied on to be really good right away. It's going to be other guys like Alex Barcelo and Seneca Knight and Tijon Lucas and Caleb Boner and Trevin Nell and company. I just love the overall length of this team, Jeremy. I can't recall a time when I've seen this many guys with that length and athleticism. Yeah, it's it's crazy, man. You got a lot, you got a, like three dudes with seven foot wingspans. That is wild. <laughs> Baxter, Atiki Ali Atiki, and Fuseni Trout. Yes. Like three players from Africa, by yeah, the way. Not to mention cool. Caleb Loner is a freak athletically, yes. too. Like, yeah. This is so athletic. It's awesome. Okay, coming up, today's rise and shout outs. And we talk with Tijon Lucas, BYU transfer guard. What does he think makes this team unique and special? We'll ask him next. This is BYU Sports Nation. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Keep a tour look.
luxurious blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. That's our job. You got to take care of the football and move the team down the field and get the ball in the end zone. They're just raising the level of play of everybody around them. And we're moving forward, so hopefully things stick. If you're a fan of BYU football, then you can't miss Coordinator's Corner. Join host Greg Rebell as he interviews BYU's football coordinators. Coordinator's Corner, live on BYU TV or on the BYU TV app. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. We got you covered Friday on game day, BYU in Logan against... Utah State, we've got BYU Sports Nation live from Logan, and then countdown to kickoff is going to be at 8 Eastern on BYU TV. It's going to be a fun day in Logan. Friday night football, cannot wait for that. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live on a Wednesday in Studio B alongside Jerem Jordan. I'm Spencer Linton. Joining us now is a man who likes himself some football, but uh, focuses in primarily on basketball at BYU. T. John Lucas joining us over Zoom, fresh off the first practice on display of the year on BYU TV last night. T. John, how was the first day of practice for you as a BYU basketball player? Uh, it, it was everything I expected it to be. You know, high energy out there. You know, a lot of guys, you know, amped up, especially when the camera's out there. You get an extra boost out there at the <laughs> night practice. <laughs> you know, the morning practice was great. Um and then the afternoon, it was a great way to end the two days with, you know, practice on TV. I was going to say, which one had more juice? But maybe you answered that with the uh, TV cameras being there at night. Yeah, you know, you're seeing guys dunking everywhere and all this kind of thing. I'm like, man, we never get this before. <laughs> like, I've never seen that. <laughs> hey, and there, like, were, everyone has juice. there were some good ones. Um, Fuseni Traore's one in, in the run of play was pretty Whoa. good. Atiki Ali Atiki was incredible. Hunter Erickson, Gideon George, there were some good ones, man. Uh, yeah, that's the most dunks in one practice I've seen all year. So I was like, <laughs> we've been doing a pretty good job. But I think it was good to, you know, be able to showcase a little bit what we do to the fans and to everyone that's interested in BYU basketball. So. T. John, I know how important it is for your family to be able to watch you and to be able to keep an eye on you as a basketball player. They're all in on you. So what was the feedback you received from your family watching the practice last night? Um, it, you know, a lot of people uh, paid attention to it, sent me screenshots of me shooting or like uh, my mom actually is my biggest critic. And I would actually text her to this morning because I was shocked. I'm like, wow, no comments from last night. <laughs> so, so she's like, she was like, actually, I was dozing off, you know, in and out. But, you know, I oh, watched that's our it bad. and I'm going to be and I'm going to actually rewatch re it again, you know, so she'll rewatch it and let me know everything I need to do. So that was good that she was able to record it. But, you know, at the end of the day, it was just good for, you know, people back at home and, fans of me and the fans of Cougar Nation to be able to see us play. What's your mom's name again? Uh, Marie. Marie. She goes by Marie. Listen, if if Marie's dozing off, that's that's my fault and Tyler's fault. So we got to sync that up. We got to get that better so that no one's dozing off uh, throughout the season. No, but she, she had a long day. She had a long day. <laughs> it had nothing to do with you. <laughs> Listen, we'll just control what we can control. Her. Uh, it, was, it was fun to be there. I, I really loved the juice like you talked about. Um, I loved the energy. I loved, obviously, there were points where you guys didn't execute, uh, you know, on defensive uh, situations or whatever. What What is the immediate feedback like? Because we got that on display where between drills, you stop, you talk. Sometimes Mark's sending someone over to be accountable and talk to us about what they didn't do. Talk to me about sort of Mark Pope's coaching style in terms of feedback and critique and trying to get better in that moment. Not like way later in film, but in the practice. Um, You know, he's very detail-oriented. Uh, so I used to pay attention to detail as much as possible and he wants to just help us be the best we can, you know, at all times. You know, if it's during a closeout, if we don't have our stick hand there, he's going to stop us and say, what did you do wrong? So he wants to uh, ask you the question, but also help you learn it and teach you at the end of the day. So it's not always just us receiving the information. He likes to ask us questions to, you know, see what we were thinking 
and then we can go from there. But like you said, you know, getting that feedback on the fly is something that, you know, can help us out, just change it, and, you know, get better at the next time we go through it. If you've seen like transition defense, we went through it like the most times I've been here <laughs> just because we just didn't get it right. And we were messing up on different things, but, you know, we were just trying to get it a hundred percent correctly because, you know, it's a, one mistake, one small mistake could cost you, you know, one game or the championship in a conference championship or even the, the NCAA tournament. BYU basketball transfer guard T. John Lucas with us on BYU Sports Nation. I know you've played on a number of teams and it's still early with BYU, but what impression does this BYU team give you that is different than the other teams that you've been a part of? Man, we're... I can say we've been locked in together so well. And as you've seen, the energy, um, that's not the only practice we have energy in. Every energy and workout we've uh, played in has been, you know, above and beyond, like, something I've seen. It's like we are already already connecting. Um, Coach even said, like, it's one of the best fall workouts we've had um, this year, and it's one of the best fall workouts I've seen. And, And I just think everybody's bought into the common goal of winning. And, and that's what's the most important. And that's what takes care of a lot of things is when you win. And I just think that everyone's bought in with it. And just the energy, as you've seen yesterday, you know, it's contagious. When one brings it, everybody else brings it. And I think that's what's best about this team is that they're ready to fight and prove a lot to this to this nation. What did you work on over the summer as you uh, embrace your final season of college basketball? Um, mostly you know, my shot, just shooting and owning it every time I shoot. Um, coach is always uh, praising and teaching me, you know, just own your shot, you know, that's the biggest thing um, and finishing it. You know, I get up shots every day uh, with the coach and by myself and just being able to stay confident. You know, confidence is the, you know, one of the biggest things that you can have. And so just being confident that the work that I put in will pay off. And so that's what I've been focusing on. We heard your roommates with Seneca Knight, and uh, now this is the time for you to kind of reveal what type of a roommate he he is like. So tell us all about Seneca. What's he like as a roommate? Uh, Seneca is actually very quiet. You know, he likes to be in his room, um, watch TV, although he does cook every day. Mm. Um, We share as an air fryer, so I'm I'm blessed to have that to be able to cook with us. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so uh but he's very quiet um and he's just always you know he's always in his room and relaxing he's a very quiet boy actually so when you found out he got his waiver um and or, I mean were you around him what, what was that reaction like when he was finally cleared to play this year uh so we were actually at a, a golf outing this past uh, I think it was Friday and we were sitting there talking he was saying like you know man, I can't wait till he get this waiver. And, you know, hopefully I get it. You know, he's been talking about it. I'm like, you know, we was joking around in the office last week. Like, man, hopefully I get to tell you about your waiver like you told me. <laughs> I didn't even know that I got cleared until Seneca walks in the gym like, hey, you know, congratulations, man. I'm like, about what? <laughs> and he's like, He's like, bro, you got, you just got cleared. I'm like, really? <laughs> and so I'm like kind of disappointed that I didn't know. And I was telling him all the time, like, I hope I can do the same for you. And so uh, he actually got a call and a text from a coach telling him to call Chad. And we were at the golf at our hole, you know, sitting there, you know, conversating and bonding with different donors and stuff at the gym for that outing. And then I see him, I look over and I just see him smiling, just like cheesing so hard. (laughs) And I'm like... He got it. Yeah. <laughs> he got yeah. it. He's just, he's just walking around, dancing, skipping around. I'm like, yep, yep, that must be it. And then he comes back over like, I got it, yes. I'm like, yep, I already knew about a smile on your face. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. And yeah. it's, it's so exciting to have him cleared because we were hoping, uh, but you never know with the NCAA. They've been actually a little – a little better with COVID stuff, right? Since before it was like, are they going to be, are they going to allow this guy to play or not? So that's great news. Tell me what Seneca cooks. Is it Louisiana and Southern dishes? What does he bring? Uh, he, he make it all. He loves spicy food. So like the slap your mama, uh, spicy seasoning, that's his favorite go-to. So like anything that he has, he likes to season that up. Um, 
what else? He makes a lot of, you know, quesadillas and okay. whatever sin I'm like making, he makes, honestly. <laughs> he, he gets up and makes him some tea sometimes, all the time. Um, so honestly, whatever he feels like, our refrigerator is always filled with food. And, <laughs> you know, I don't always, which is pretty nice. Even though I don't eat all his things, you know, kind of uh, be respectful of that. But <laughs> it's good to see it's always filled because sin is always cooking every day. You know, I can rely on that to come home smelling good, even though I had to be the last one to cook, but it's fine. <laughs> hey, hey, that works, right? And hopefully you guys are cooking on the court, too. That'll be fun. Okay, um, hey, what what was your sort of uh, 10 years ago relationship with, like, watching Jimmer Fredette and then now being at BYU, and then I'm assuming you met him perhaps for the – first time maybe over the weekend or recently uh yeah so honestly uh I was on the wave like everybody else you know Jimmy Fredette you know making historic you know games uh and I don't know what I was doing 10 years ago so I was about 12 you know 13 so I was like uh eighth grade you know in middle school I'm pretty sure I had the app NCAA app watching it on my phone you know watching his games uh, all the time and then I also remember the jimmer for that dance like teach me how to jimmer yeah yeah you know, all those things <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty big where I was from and you know just you know him dropping what 40 on Kawhi Leonard who's one of the best defenders now in today's game which is is crazy and he was kind of like a Steph Curry before Steph so yep. you know it was big you know being able to be at his outing you know meeting his his family his sister his brothers and stuff like that. And it was pretty good. You're getting a firsthand experience of what BYU fans are like, uh, not just as a 12 year old, but right now, uh, TJ. And we can't wait for you to play in the Marriott Center and play in front of a packed house. It's going to be a lot of fun. Man, can't wait. I'm super excited. We appreciate the time, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. All right, talk soon. Thank you, guys. You got it. T. John Lucas, BYU transfer guard on BYU Sports Nation. I love him, man. Uh, Mark Pope told us this week. Hey, he's kind of he's he's not TJ House, but he's got like a TJ House skill set um, with a different energy, which is super exciting. And he uses his left hand so much that last night I mistakenly said he's left-handed. That's how that's how good he is. He's ambidextrous. Yeah. After I go, I think I'm wrong. You're right-handed, right? And he goes, Yeah. I go, I said you were left-handed. That's how good you. Are. He goes, I use it a lot. It's all good. He goes up with the left hand. He's good. That's what you want your primary ball controller to do. Yeah. Okay, coming up is Notre Dame in Vegas. Enough for you. Plus, who earns the rise and shout out today? This is BYU Sports Nation. Hey, Cougars. Coach Dave Rose here. I might not be on the court right now, but I still play on my sport court basketball court at home. Now more than ever, we all need a safe place to stay home, stay healthy, and play with family. I have an active family with my kids, grandkids, former players. My wife and I decided the best thing we could give our family is the gift of backyard memory. Sport court provides a place to help kids become champions, and they're certainly popular in our neighborhood. For our new home, we chose sport court. Learn more about designing yours at sportcourt.com. Welcome to a partnership where customer experience comes first. It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. Like 15 feet tall. Yeah. Woohoo! We did it! I can say I wouldn't be the man I am today without them. This is amazing. I think about these brothers. My heart just melts for them. We have a lot of fun. We laugh, we cry, we celebrate. It changes lives. This is Countdown to Kickoff. Guys, I'm done. players are tough. <laughs> Broadcasters are way tougher That's than right. players. Algier into the end zone for the punctuation. That is how you start Countdown to Kickoff. Touchdown. Isaac Rex laying out for the score. I'm, I'm going to mark that one down. That's big enough. Early to spicy, it. mark it down. Mark you know? it down. Yeah.
This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review the show. Please, if you so choose, answer our question of the day, which is, does the location of the BYU Notre Dame game matter? Or are you just glad the game got scheduled? If you've been hiding under a rock, it's in Las Vegas mm-hmm. next season, October 8th, 2022 at Allegiant Stadium. What about that- the people who literally had been under a rock? They're like, hey, there are a few of us under a rock. Sorry, Patrick Be from SpongeBob. <laughs> at JFloyd314. Yes, it matters. We had a deal. And in true Darth Vader style... The game is at Darth Vader's hangout. Notre Dame has done everything possible to make the deal progressively worse. What? Still happy we are playing them, but this isn't ideal. Wait, did you did you just forget how the Arizona game went and like how awesome it was? I I don't I don't think Jay Floyd 314 was at the game. If you were at the game, you would understand and just like enjoy. I I don't know. I I understand if you're bugged, it's not in Provo, but it's a great situation nationally for, to get this game even more hype. And BYU plays another game only five hours away? It's BYU's home away from home. The Cougars have six home yeah, games, I feel differently. five road games, and now a neutral site game that in some well, ways kind of feels like a home game. One of those road games at Boise State, so it's within six hours, right? Okay. Awesome. Our Elite Voice of the Day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from Kyle Bowman at K underscore Sizzle 11 on Twitter says, the irony of two religious schools playing in Sin City is 100% worth it. Yes. Listen, Sin City has become more, uh, you know, family friendly over the years. It's still not completely family friendly, but eh, it's less Sin City than it used to be, you know? BYU. I, I feel you, Kyle. I feel you. Now, BYU had discussed this game happening at SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles, but Notre Dame already goes to L.A. They play either uh, USC, probably. USC or, they, or California for that matter. They play at either Stanford or USC. So. Mm. Them relenting and doing it in Las Vegas, it works out for both sides. The game's happening. I'm happy. I get yes. it. You're not. I get. I get it. Today's rise and shout outs presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. How about uh, Mark Pope and the men's basketball team letting us in for that practice? Which Access. Is fun. And then uh, thanks to your Orioles and my Mariners. Let's hey, go, hey, O's. We got a shot, baby. Orioles ruining dreams for other teams. I love it. If it's the Red Sox and Yankees, yeah, great. Our thanks to today's guest, Riley Nelson and T. John Lucas. Started Dennis Pitta. We ran out of time. For Jerem Jordan, I'm Spencer Linton. Shout out to Scott Colley. We'll see you tomorrow on BYU Sports Nation. Game day eve for the 13th ranked Cougars as they try and get to 5-0. Go Cougs. <laughs>